everyone. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is I'm mixing up a very thinned out uh, paint here that's related to the painting behind me. And uh, I've thinned it out with uh, airbrush medium and you can see it's, it's uh, very liquidy. And I've got a sponge roller here. And uh, one of the things that I've been experimenting with is working on this um, ability to get semi-transparency using tracing paper that's been coated with acrylic in differing amounts of transparency so that I can then cut out the shapes I want after they're dry and then collage them over the painting. And I've never actually done this with a sponge roller before, so I'm gonna just show you my process. It may or may not work, it's an experiment. Okay, so I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm gonna apply it to tracing paper with the sponge roller, and then I'm gonna lay it on a special paper that is like a Teflon release paper. It's, it's used when you ship acrylic paintings. It's kind of the, the, the wrap that you would put against the surface because it doesn't stick to acrylic. Because these tracing papers are so delicate, they're very, very thin, uh, I need to make sure that it's not gonna stick to whatever it's laying on top of as it dries. If I had endless area and could hang it dry, and I have tried that, but sometimes the paper will tear because it's so thin, and when it's wet, it's very fragile. So my idea is to lay it on this acrylic release paper, and hopefully as it dries, I'll be able to have some usable sheets. So I'm gonna turn my camera around and show you what I'm doing. So you can see my Teflon release paper on the floor. I've laid it out here and uh, there's a pretty good length of it so that I can uh, lay various papers. Now this is the tracing paper I'm gonna be using and I've shown this to others before. Uh, it is a Ben Fang paper, but it's super thin. Uh, and so when you get it wet, you know, that's the thing, it's very fragile. So I'm just gonna lay it down here and see what happens. I don't know if it'll work, kinda hope it does. So everything is a process here, and I'm using a sponge tool to add a semi-transparent, light-valued wash of acrylic. And I'm on the floor, and I've got my tracing paper, which is super, super thin, uh, laying on top of this acrylic release paper. My hope is that when this dries, I can cut out shapes and collage them onto the painting, onto the canvas. I've never tried this before. And the reason I'm using the sponge roller is so that I'll have a very, very even layer of paint. Like I don't wanna see any brush marks. I don't wanna see any type of marks at all. The whole point of using the sponge roller and doing it like this is so that I get a really, really, uh, almost like a glaze that I can then, you know, cut out these pieces and apply to this painting. So. Yeah, this painting is mostly curvilinear, and, but I like to add structure. So I've got my yardstick here and I'm starting to draw lines into it, which you can't see, but I'm showing you the process on how I do this. And I'm kind of just dividing the canvas up into uh, basically layers. And I have a plan, uh, kind of a, uh, a vague plan. I don't know if I'm gonna uh, stay with it, but for now I'm gonna add some tape here and. Uh, what I'd like to do is um, get a really crisp edge. So one way to do that when you're using tape is you apply it and then over the edges, you want to apply a little bit of gloss medium. Yeah, this is the part where I'm adding the gloss medium and you wanna let it completely dry. But then when you paint uh, over the tape and you remove the tape, it's gonna give you a really nice crisp edge. And you'll see that happen later on in this video. Now I start to apply the paint and because I want it to be uh, quieting down some of the chaos, I want this glaze to basically uh, make the values below the green tape a lot closer and it's a semi-transparent glaze. So you can see through it a little bit, but um, later on I'll be using those um, sheets of acrylic, um, tracing paper that I showed you I was working on on the floor. Once they dry, I can cut out shapes and apply them. 
So at this process, there's just a lot of um, measuring and pencil marks. And I'm, you know, sometimes I'll mock things up in Photoshop. Other times I'll just do things really randomly. But in this case, I wanted each layer or band going horizontally to be a different width or height. And so I just had to consider that I have a three foot tall canvas and figure out how many layers I wanted and then how thick do I want them. Uh, so yeah, that's part of the planning process for me. I often use this green painter's tape because it's more sticky than the blue. Uh, but I guess if, um, if you go over the edge of your tape, you know, with the gloss medium, then you really don't have to worry too much about how sticky it is. Uh, putting that gloss medium over the edge is really going to help you a lot to get a crisp edge. So notice um, the whole process of adding geometry for me, um, getting out of a yardstick and, you know, measuring and all these things is very different from how I began the painting. I would call this uh, a contrast. And, you know, I, I guess I'm always looking for ways to contrast things in my work because it makes it interesting. So because there was so much chaos, I'm using these bands to really uh, kind of randomly quiet things down. Like I don't have to decide what areas I like and what I don't like when I decide that there's going to be a band there and, and then paint over it, say with either transparent glaze or gouache or whatever it is, that decision's already been made. I don't have to say, well, wait a minute, I loved that area, so I can't paint over it. It's already been decided that I will paint over it because that's part of my plan. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but <laughs> anyways, you can let me know if um, there's a part of your process where, you know, you really change things up and you go from, say, something really chaotic um, and then you go to something more structured. Like, how do you do that? What's your favorite way to add structure uh, to your painting when you've got a lot of chaos, if you start that way? And that's how I tend to start. So right now I, I'm sanding back a little bit or lifting paint just to make it more transparent. There are a lot of ways you can remove paint. So that adding and subtracting thing, I've got my my sponge roller, but you know you can also just take a wet paper towel and uh, lift some of that paint and reveal what's underneath it. You can reuse the tape, especially when it's the green painter's tape. It's very, very sticky. If you ever peel tape off your acrylic painting and it lifts the acrylic paint, um, that's kind of a warning sign that you're not getting good adhesion. And that happened to me when I used an oil prime canvas underneath my acrylic. I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to do that. When I peeled the tape off, I ripped off the acrylic and uh, that painting was ruined. I knew that I, I couldn't uh, continue on with it. So that was unfortunate. That was a big mistake I made. So notice at this point, I have knocked out a lot of that original fluorescent underpainting, but um, you'll see that there are ways to bring some color back and I'm gonna add shapes later. And then as I peel this tape off, of course, that reveals more of the painting. But the idea is that there's some spontaneity there. There's some of the original underpainting there, but not, not to the extent that it was, because I knew that that would be too much. Again, we're using tape. And I actually could use this tape for another painting. It, it actually stays sticky for a long time. So uh, this stuff is not cheap. And so it's really nice when you can reuse things. Adding more of that gloss medium to the edge of the tape. And you let that dry before you go over the edge of the tape. And because I'm impatient, I use a hairdryer to speed up the drying.
Again, lifting with the sponge roller. That's to increase the transparency. I was finding that it was too opaque. Notice how each band uh, varies in how transparent it is. And that's what I really wanted was a lot of variety and some contrast between the underpainting and the layers uh, or bands that were on top of it. Here's a close up. And still see quite a bit of the underpainting, even through those bands. Plenty of chaos still there, in my opinion. I'm sure a lot of people will say, why did you cover up all that paint? But um, I do some things toward the end that um, you'll see it does really change. So I'm going to show you a still image of, um, I, I actually didn't record myself um, collaging the tracing paper on. So I'm just going to show you how the painting ended. And I'm really quite pleased with it. I did end up um, cutting it in half and it's now a diptych. But you can see the tracing paper shapes. And again, those were cut out of uh, the tracing paper that I was painting with the sponge roller on the floor. And it's a really cool way to get just the right amount of transparency and also have control over your shapes um, by using collage. And I found this to be a really, really fun way to uh, work on this painting. So I hope you enjoyed that, everyone. Bye now.